uh, well, they're figuring that out. Um, it's really embarrassing to be like part of something called Jung and Chung <laughs> when you're like wondering about identity and bored with that. I'm like, am I young? <laughs> Maybe. I guess I'm younger than most people. Whatever. I mean, it's a very embarrassing thing to think about, but but it's true. And and good people tell me to be friends with younger architects all the time. So like, to hang out with old architects too much. And uh, so that's just like my just thinking about like what young and Sean means, which I don't want to get into like the Germanness of that. But you know, it's like it is true that you should be friends with younger architects and not older architects. It's a great mistake that I've made in my life. And I hang out with like Marco Leibinger, and I hang out with Arnold Brandenhuber, you know. And they're just like old, just old, old dudes who are like not young and beautiful and <laughs> getting fatter, and you know, and they're making. In theory, me fatter, you know, it's all, you know, it's like it makes you old. So, you know, just to say, as a premise, you should like, I want to follow this from today. Try to hang out with more, <laughs> more people like myself who are young and beautiful. Um, <laughs> and uh, my partner is, is older, but infinitely more beautiful than I am. She's not here. She has two kids, and it's pretty hard to like talk her out of going to Berlin on anything other than like pure vacation. Um, which is fine for me because I don't I don't mind going around and taking the train and whatever. So I'm no sweat off my back. It's easier to talk with pictures, obviously, because that's kind of it's kind of a visual medium. Architecture lectures. Um, what else can I say? I mean, I think it was already explained, but and I already kind of said this. But tomorrow will be the eighth anniversary of our office. So June fourteenth. Oh. There we go. Okay, not good. Um, I didn't make that. <laughs> um, nothing against it. Um, anyway, so tomorrow's the eighth anniversary. Before that, Johan and I worked at Sana for a really long time. It seemed like a really long time if you don't leave the office very much, which is the the kind of deal at Sana. You just sort of stay there and go home every few days. Um, it was a great time though, and then we kind of learned. Your colleagues asked me to, to kind of briefly talk a little bit about methodology as opposed to like, look what we made. It's easier to talk about look what we made, but the methodology thing comes from Sana, right? And I'll, and I'll get to that in the lecture. But basically, Sejima and Nishizawa have this kind of options theory, which is basically they let everybody, interns, whoever, you know, both Johanna and I started out as interns, present whatever, right? So you have to present something at the table and you sit at the same table as everybody else who's been there 10 years or said you to themselves and present like a little plan, a little section, drawing. Yeah, things have to be to scale, right? So you can't like present a mood, right? You can't like crumple up. It's not Frank Gehrig, so you can't like crumple up a piece of paper and be like, I don't think it should be weird. You, know, you have to have like, <laughs> you have like a pretty clear logic, but, but given, you know, within those brands, and obviously you have to have it be white, at least to start out, unless you have a really good reason, <laughs> like which is uh, never never happened to me, um, to not have it be white. Um, anyway, so that's so. What you, I'll just explain this thing, and then I'll go into my thing. Even though I had forty six minutes and counting, weirdly, do you know about this? That I was assigned to speak for forty seven minutes, which is like pretty <laughs> pretty particular. Um, I hope you're not like counting. Um, anyway, so so she had this thing. Here we go. Oh no, that's sorry. Do I have like a little the, the yeah, button um, thing? It's not working with me. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. I'm so sorry. No, it's alright. That's right. There are 80 slides though. But most of them are like click click click. So so this is our big Johanna and I are do working on like one really big project, but this this is like a kind of a little exhibition we did already a couple years ago of a building that's under construction. And that's just one building. And apropos this sauna thing. So like at, at some point we're like working at this scale and like working out. Can you see that sort of? I mean, just take my word for it. It's one building, and they're all models of the same thing. And so they're smaller. The smaller ones are more varied, of course. And then as they get bigger, they start to be the same kind of logic, right? So like, I'll explain this further. But but basically what what I learned from Sigma is like everybody gets to try everything out, and if you really have time, and you don't care about money, and you don't really care about anything other than architecture, you can just make models forever, thinking carefully about 
all the possible ways you can deal with things. And in each kind of, let's say, meeting or step, you say, like, this kind of thing might be a little bit better than that kind of thing. But then you kind of go back and forth, and, and you kind of come up with a few logics that achieve, like, one or two or three clear points. So that, that the kind of notion of making models is, like, the whole notion of methodology, right? So, like, we don't do 3D renderings. There's no renderings in this thing, even though some photos look like renderings, mistakenly. They're a real thing. Um, we don't do renderings, we don't really do 3D, which makes me sound like not so young and beautiful, but whatever. Um, it's a practical thing, mostly because I don't know how to do it, and I don't like looking at people's screens when they shake the thing around. Um, what am I doing? But is it on? Oh no. Okay. Uh, I, I, can, I can manage this. Uh, can I, can I, can I have this? Oh, we'll, 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 we'll figure it out. Um, no, we'll do like, we'll do like... can just change the speed. Oh, yeah. Wait. It would <laughs> yeah, see, people, some people are tired. Some people are big bucks here. Um, thanks. Okay. But then I'm in the way. Well, whatever. All right. Uh, so one of my favorite things that, I, that we did, that Johanna and I did, is uh, this sauna. It's, it's, uh, this is Arno, naked. Um, you probably know Arno. Everybody knows Arno, right? I mean, you should. He's like infinitely cooler architect than me or most people. My favorite German architect and my best friend. Um, mistakenly, as I already mentioned. But um, So this is back of Arno's house, which I'm sure you know, Grünstrasse 9, which is also my office where I also lived. And we had this like party phase that was like pretty intense. And then we kind of... We kind of like, he kind of got married, my mother died, and I kind of had a, like a slowdown. And the result, oh, let's see. So the result of that was like, we thought we needed a sauna. And we built like, this is like, we built a sauna that's the most intimate and the most open thing ever. And it really doesn't need much more equation. That's Johanna, by the way, who, as mentioned, is more cool, beautiful, better architect, et cetera, than, than I am, um, and Arno and I. And this sauna is just, it's just one centimeter plexiglass box, and it's one, it's a meter fifty cubed, and when you heat it up, it gets uh, opaque, right? I mean, opaque, sorry, like translucent. Um, and you, so that's just on Arno's roof, that's like, that's how we, just like, that's the post-party, let's relax. Um, and it, you know, part of that is a thing that I've gotten into recently, and I'll like kind of jump back and forth between like things I've been working on a long time and things that like are really my thing right now. So what I'm into right now is like when I'm getting jobs, and I'm getting more jobs that are kind of furniture related, but but also more pavilion-y and less architecty. So explain this thing like we got this ridiculous commission, but it's like a well-paid, nice thing, but it's a ridiculous request. It's like the back of Christian Dior facing Celine. So like, you don't know what that is. Like there's stupidly expensive shops in Miami, right? And it's like an alley, and it's just like a sh shitty facade, right? It's like a two-story building. It's 80 feet. You figure that out yourself what that means. But, um, and it's the backstage. So I just thought, like, what are people going to do on this wall, right? I mean, there, the commission was like intended that I paint the wall. Like, well, I don't know what I'm going to paint, like a you know, big pink hat or whatever. I mean, I, I'm not so interested in symbols. I was like, what are people going to do there? Right? So they saw I was like, what are you going to do, right? And so like, Sejima and Sana, like, they always asked what to do, right? Like, Sana is very rarely asked to like, think up what to do. Sana is asked, like, given, like, real briefs, like, all those competitions, Lausanne, you know, this, like, Swiss, the whole thing, like, all, all the buildings that you know from Sana, like, it's in the brief, so, like, it's an interpretation of the brief, right? Like, all those buildings are really, really, really good interpretations of the brief, like, the new museum, you need all these galleries and the administration spaces, and you stack them up, and you get light and terraces, and that makes sense, right? Very, like, just acknowledge that, yes, right? <laughs> so, so, but when you're younger and beautiful, you have you you have you have assignments where nobody knows what the fuck you should do, and they're like, "Here's a hundred thousand bucks, make it nice." 
And you're like, <laughs> so, so I spent a lot of time recently, and you might have this problem too, like kind of thinking like, what are you going to do there? Right, so like, it, it's sort of, it, part of architecture is becoming like the invention of program. That it's not something that Sejima and Nishizawa ever taught. Sejima would be like, fuck off if, you, if somebody asked her to paint a, or a wall. But I kind of got to this thing, and I'm into this backstage thing, because it's the back of something, but in between these fancy shops, and it's a public street. Anyway, there's Frank Sinatra, who I happen to love, which I should have answered, but I really listen to Frank Sinatra all the time, too. Um, because I miss a time when it was cool to be drunk. <laughs> because it's not cool anymore, and that's a shame. Um, so, I came, so I came up with this idea that you should go back there and do your makeup. And I don't know if any of you have ever been to Miami, but Miami is like a place with like big tits and big lips and fancy cars and just, you know, people care what they look like in a way that is not natural. Um, and so, that, so I was given this facade, and it's under construction now, but I don't have the photo that's any good construction. But basically I decided to make like an entire backstage out of this, this wall. And so you can go and do your makeup and as an ashtray, just like Frank Sinatra. You know, it's that simple. I think it's a really nice invention of the program. And, and the budget was 100000 and it cost two fifty, and they still pay. So <laughs> that tells me, that's a, that's a good client. Um, you know, my fee didn't go up. That's another issue in life. But we don't want to we'll skip over that. As I mentioned, it's boring topic. <laughs> Um, I'm very proud of like for some reason in the office somebody left to look to their own devices and made a one-to-one -one model of the ashtray with the cigarette in a one-to-one -one model, which I felt like why you just take a cigarette. But anyway, um, <laughs> it's charming. But that's so so that's kind of how we study things. And recently we we kind of interested in in the body also. Like so the program thing is one part of it, but we're interested in the body and sort of how. I don't want to keep going back to Sejima, but now I've gotten on this track, so just quickly go. You know, all those buildings have like relatively small columns, or like, rel you know, they're even if they're really big spaces like Lausanne, Rolex Learning Center, right? Like, you know, it's, it's got these big spaces that are doing all kinds of things, but there's also like pretty small columns and pretty like relatable things, like not not unlike the. Bar thing, like basically every sauna column is like one of those bar things painted white, right? Like a tiny bit fatter, but not much. And those those kind of columns like relate to you. Like you stand next to them in this big rolling thing or variety of other projects, and you kind of understand yourself, right? And so it occurs to me and Johanna that our work is kind of becoming more directly about like the body and the person. So like you know. You look at that facade, which you know looks like a big light thing, but on the other hand, like they're actually all bodies, right? You know, I mean, that's a normal sized door, so like it's actually like scaled so that it fits to you somehow. So like you're there, and like it's a personal moment, and you relate to it. I mean, it's hard to convey in pictures, but I, I think you get the idea. Um, so how do I organize this lecture well? So this is about bodies too. Um, this is like this thing that I've been working on for ages. This is like a pretty old drawing, but I remake them constantly and you'll see it in slides. Whereas I had this idea years ago that kitchens should not be like built-in things. You know, that the kitchen should be like family that you relate to, that you like discuss with, like you have like a talk with your kitchen, right? And it really works. I mean, never mind that it's a bitch to clean, but if you don't really care about it being that clean, it's totally fine. Right? And, and, and a lot of clients accept this, and it's fine. Or you're really rich and you have a cleaning lady. Both, I mean, they're really expensive, so <laughs> you can work it out any way you want. Um, but it's the same kind of story where, you're, where everything that you have in your life like, becomes furniture and like, a thing in discussion with you, like a, little, like a family. Yeah. Right? And so that they become like, families, but also like characters, like suddenly the toaster, which is just a toaster, like a really dope, overpriced, purchased and manufactured toaster, um, Nazi toaster, but, <laughs> but nonetheless a very excellent toaster, you know, becomes like something special that like you kind of deal with and relate to, and like when you use it, it's like a 
in the most minor way, like an event, right? And I don't know if you're aware about this, but like WeWork and like all this, all the kind of new ad things. Another thing which I started working on for like Jung van Mott, which is this big German ad agency, like everything now is like experience. So like, I guess I'm falling into that category. Sorry that it's so blurry, but you get the idea. That's just a nice photo of my apartment in our house. Um, and so kind of one of the other things that we kind of, again, back to like the program thing, like this kind of, this is just a table, but it's also a table you can make coffee on, or, or tea, or pancakes, for that matter. So it's, you know, it's, it's typologically really a kitchen on the top, so it's like kitchen tiles, like the most basic kitchen tile, 10 by 10, Baumar, whatever. And then it's also like exactly the kind of size of a very, very normal coffee table. So it's, but you can, you know, you can then, I'm sorry that there's a San Rocco like, on there that annoys me, but, but basically like you, you can cook coffee with your friends, right? So, you know, you have people over. Why, I don't know why nobody thought about this. I'm very proud of this little invention. And you'll see that like we got into a lot of tea and coffee making. Um, but it's, a, it's, it's one of the furniture things that works best. And again, it's about the body, but then this thing is like also getting to another thing, which when we started eight years ago, and now it's a little bit less, like everybody just talks about togetherness constantly, right? Like we've got to be together, you know, we, our big project, which you'll see in a second, is like a battle group, of, it's like people and sharing, and I, you know, I can't, I, I can totally agree with all that, and I'm sure you do too, but it's, the second most boring thing besides like your personal identity to talk about at the moment, you know, because everybody's like shared housing, you know, it's like, you should do that, like we should make shared housing, like yes, but, but every architect's gonna come here and say like, we make a shared together thing. So, so I'm just realizing now, because I've shown this before and I, I feel like you're a receptive audience, this like, this frustration that I have about it. <laughs> um, totally different thing. The only like proper building that we've actually finished. Um, so 3M, you've all used 3M things today. Everybody has it, all over the world. You know this like the tape. They make like the fucking little thing there. You know that that piece is made by 3M. You know so everything. So they make so they make they make everything. And we got this weird job to like redo their lobby like right out of Sana. And the lobby part was kind of a failure, but then they had this like funny kind of, what do you think, like a, like a little thing where, you know, it's America, so like you, you giant awning where you drive a car under it to like enter, but it was concrete and not beautiful concrete like this building, which is really nice, but something American and bad. Um, so we thought like we could repurpose this kind of entrance thing into a new building, which we did. So that's, so we built like a whole office building because we were like young and beautiful aspirational architects and we wanted to make a whole lot of it. It's just one room. <laughs> it's just one room, but it's awesome. And it's, <laughs> it's just one room. And you know, Johanna, Johanna doesn't, would never show this in lecture because somehow I like had a postmodern moment in this. It, that, that, that might be a mistake and you can, whatever. We don't, let's not go into it. But I really like that it's made like also in the American way where like it's structure and then like really fake like wood cladding on the sides. Like it's really made not like not in the nice way. Like not in concrete, not like as a pure box. It's like pretty cheap structure with like wooden facade, like with spacing. It's it was it's fun. It's fun. It's fun. And then it like turns I don't know about the low resolution, but but you get the idea, right? Like it's just one, it's just the boardroom. It's like the big boardroom, but it's one office building, office building, office building, office buildings, <laughs> right? <laughs> so we an office building. It makes sense. Um, so on a totally different direction, it's something like I'm feeling more proud of. So our big building that we've been working on for I, I can't even speak out loud how long. We've been, we've been working on it. years and like year. I really was young and beautiful back then, um, and 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 my parents were alive, and Johan didn't have children. I mean, really, like everything changed. <laughs> but now it's under construction, um, and it's under construction on a site that we bought together with a bunch of people 
very cheaply on Kurvisenstrasse. I don't know how well you guys know Berlin, but it's like a, now it's pretty central and like pretty hip part of town. Although it still is also the strict. So it's the, it's like the proper strict. It's like, a, it's, there's two strings. There's, am I saying that right? That's like a German word, right? Like the Hooker Street, right? Yeah, I was getting that. Um, and it's not like the pretty Hooker Street, it's like, and these guys, these are people, you know, it's like the, just like, <laughs> It's just like the Hooker Street. And I looked into it, it's been the Hooker Street for a hundred years. So it's not like a new, you know, whatever. And it turns out that hookers don't define what the Hooker Street is, John's do, people who buy hookers. So it's really, really, really hard to move a Hooker Street. Just, I don't know, like a technical matter. Like I became friends with the priest next door and he got like a road changed in a like to change directions so that like the Johns couldn't drive anymore past the nursery school, so the hookers, there were specifically transvestite hookers in front of a nursery school that he took issue with. And he like commissioned the city to, in a very architectural way to have the street like change direction. And then it didn't work anymore that they, the, the path of the guys in the car didn't work. Anyway, so that's a, like a long story. Oh, I should have had a site plan. Sorry, if I was a student, I would have known that. Um, so it's a bow group, and I'll go back to the hooker thing in a minute. So we've got, we've got uh, 21 apartments. That's Johanna again. Um, and this is us trying to convince people that uh, it's gonna be okay. And, and they did believe it at the time. <laughs> <laughs> at the time, I mean, they were concerned and bored and confused, but they signed up for a whole bunch of things that like, they can't change anymore. So it's great. Um, and so back to that options thing, and I'll try to kind of explain the design process of this, this one more than the other ones, which are kind of, the other ones also had options, like every, everything had options, of course, but this, this one was a big one. So, so you've got the hookers to the north, and you've got to the south, like a quite lovely courtyard, right? So, and it's a Baugrupa, so, you know, it's, so everybody is involved, like, wants to be at the south. But, you know, if you can imagine, uh, I'm gonna have to just go forward and then come back. So, so, hookers, north facade, lots of hookers in the north, like, in dark Berlin. Like, really nice garden, right? So, just that, because that, that, so, like, kind of parameter numero uno is, like, every apartment's got to pass through, but, like, in a corner apartment, it's, like, not necessarily easy to do. So that's just like a rule, that's like a given thing, like uh, apropos sauna rules, like you get like, you, you can't mess around with that. The other thing, the other thing that we started to kind of discover is, and I'm sure it's true of Hanover too, although I really have only ever been like from the station to here on the train, so like, but basically all the rooms are kind of the same, like at least in Berlin, you know, a living room and a bedroom is about the same and the kitchen is just half of one of those. And so basically like, you know, the kind of general way is like there's a staircase, you have a hallway and you have five rooms and the rooms are essentially the same. And we think, and I, you probably agree, that, that there's different qualities of space now required and that there's a kind of, the publicness has one quality and the privateness given, in, in one given home has like a real difference. Like, First of all, people want their kitchens connected to like the rest of their space, so that you know you could have a little lecture, like theater, for example. Um, and you know your private, your sleeping rooms can become smaller, right? So everybody wants like more loft type space, right? No, this is not news to anybody, right? Even though when I teach in Germany, all the time people draw very regular rooms that are all the same. But anyhow, um, so that so there's a pass through thing. There's this high-low thing, and then there's this other thing. So that's like here's like an example of like where we had a scheme where in like one side was double high and the other side was like all these tiny little rooms onto the street side, and it was a wacky idea. But as you can see, there's a lot of staircases. It doesn't make sense. Um, this was like a funny idea where like you had a really low place where you had sleeping rooms and bathrooms and whatnot, and then you had really big space like the hamburger option, which Arno and I are la are building elsewhere. Um, but I don't show that. And then we had this like level story. This is all going to become clear. And then there's another. There's another. Do you guys know who Stimann is? Maybe not. 
So, so in Berlin, there was really nasty folks uh, in the 90s who made lots of conservative stuff, right? I mean, you know who Kohlhoff is? You know, very not young and beautiful, um, pretty old. Uh, so, so all those guys wanted to like remake the 19th century. Sometimes they wanted to remake 19th century Chicago or 19th century New York, but basically the 19th century, right? Like very anti-modern concept. Everybody's been to Berlin, right? So you, I assume. So you know that like the block structure is like a real thing, right? Like it's not, a, it, and pretty much everybody who's like not a pretty city, Berlin, like not beautiful. Right, but nonetheless, we're gonna like remake it like cold block structure, just like keep those trap linias going real sharp. And we, Johanna and I both were like, fuck that. So we're, one of the things we were trying to do, like the sort of third agenda item, was to fuck around with the edge of the block. Because you're supposed to build out the block and like what's building out the block? Where's the edge of it? Um, so that's how we started getting into this kind of edge condition that, that, you know, that sounds like it's just a rebellion against Stuman, but of course like, when you break out the block edge, like, you start to make the thing feel more open and more transparent, and the city starts to come in, and the housing starts to come out, and basically you're breaking down that boundary, which is like what most good architecture is about. How, how it's going to be? Anyhow, so there it is. Uh, and it's, so just to explain it, and it's really, really easy if you see the model, I like, crossed my mind to bring it, but it's very big, so I just did the most recent one. But basically it's six overlapping towers wherein there's double, everybody's got a double high space in the middle, and everybody has like some set of overlaps where it overlaps, right? So like a la Le Cabousier, there's like 230, like really low ceilings in some parts. This section would have been useful, but we're gonna get it. Right, so like, Johanna and I own this one. We're incidentally not together, but at the time that this drawing was made, we were. Um, so we have this flat here, right? And then this white, I have a laser here. So like, no phone? Oh yeah. So like, that's our flat, and that's, that part is double high, right? And that double high space makes like a kind of S shape, so it's softly divided in a kind of nice way, so you could be like doing something over here, and somebody else could be doing something over there. The column is not in the corner anymore, thank God. Um, and then this is like a is our kitchen, which we share with Lars Muller. Uh, this is all still happening, except that Johanna and I are together, and Lars Muller is crazy. Um, you guys know who Lars Muller is? Like a great architecture publisher, worth knowing, infinitely more famous than Johanna and I. Um, and I had this like scheme that he's going to put the library in the kitchen, which is. Neither here nor there. Um, so, and this happens in a lot of places, but basically, like we kind of collectively share this space, which is our kitchen and his kitchen, and then he can wall his off. And right, and so like that same condition, again without the columns and the corners happens everywhere, right? So in theory, you can walk kind of through the whole thing. And it's gotten nicer now. Um, this is like a more, that's really crappy. So that's like one apartment, one apartment, one apartment, one apartment, right? And then they, there's two cores to step back. Like that's a core and that's a core, right? So that core, feeds these two, this court feeds these two, and then there are bridges from here through that apartment into that one. There are such nice photos. Um, and so we still, as you can see, we still make paper models, and we try to take photos of them that are good. But one of the things that, I, and then, and so now we're into like real negotiation about all kinds of things about the facade, and like, of course, that edge is getting better all the time. It's Germany, you're gonna face that. You should leave. <laughs> um, like trying to make mullions here is really sad. Um, but one of the things that was also, which like a battle that I won that I really fought hard about, which I don't expect you to care about, but. 
so everything like now, particularly related to like Stimon and so forth, like everything has like these very tall, thin glass pitches. I don't know if you've noticed this, like you go get out at Hauptbahnhof, like everything has like tall, thin glass, which is really cheap. And we wanted wide glass, big, wide pieces of glass. And the, the rub is that it's really expensive to open and wide pieces of triple glazing because they're really heavy. It's like one day I was like, fuck it, let's just make all the openings opaque. So, so all, everything that's opaque is just like insulation that moves. And I'm really happy about it and I won the battle of the glass pitch. The mullions I lost. The mullions are getting bigger than that. But the glass pitch is staying like there's only four panes across that whole facade, you know, one, four, you know, because otherwise they want, it's much cheaper to do it if you want the openings to make it into eight panes. You know what I mean? I hope it doesn't get too boring. Um, sorry about the bad quality of these. Uh, something more, so that's going to be done in like uh, two years maybe? I don't know. I mean, I've given, totally given up hope that it's ever going to be done. Um, and I haven't, you know, of course, like I haven't sent a bill for three years, you know, and I still do it. It's a pack up. Um, but it's actually just going. It's under construction. The concrete's there, the crane's moving, the guy's doing something. Um, I don't know if I need to explain this. It's my triangle bed, which there, which a lot of people buy. Amazing. Shocks me. Um, but we do like a whole manufacturer of them. Um, it's for the nuclear family, and it's opposite together. It's a very clear title. I don't have anything to do with that thing. Um, <laughs> so, you know, one of the things we're doing is like continuing with this kind of cook cooktop thing, where tables and I, you know, I don't like the way stoves are. I don't know if you ever tried to build a stove, but, or buy one, that, you know, they're always in a set, and they, you know, they kind of take over aesthetically whatever it is you're doing. And so, I got into this thing where we make our own stoves now, and a lot of them. Um, this is for Saskia Dietz, who, um, I don't know if you know her, she's like a jewelry designer in Munich. Probably a lot of you have her jewelry. Um, it's pretty inexpensive, nice. Uh, this is our this is our bathtub, one of our bathtub designs, which I'm very fond of. Kind of back to the bodies story. This I just got a picture of yesterday, so I had to show it. This is our new chair, and I'm really proud of it. Um, I don't know what this is about. I think this is about not being young and beautiful and being old, and wanting to like, make a mark, in, like this kind of architecture way, and like because I can't build a skyscraper. I want to make like a real chair that's like typological, like a dining chair that looks exactly like a dining chair, but no one ever saw it exactly like that before. It's a pretty sad desire, but I think it's a good result. <laughs> um, you know, that's the last slide. Um, can I have a glass of wine? This one's getting a little warm because I'm tense. <laughs>